Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the ASUS VivoBook Pro 16X OLED. This is a laptop targeted at creatives and visual content creators. Now let me just give you the bottom line up front. This 16-inch display is big, it's sharp, it's color accurate with color support up to 100% Adobe RGB, P3 and sRGB. And the uh, performance is smooth, it's lag free, and it has a graphics card so it can be used for some light gaming but not for playing AAA titles. The battery life is up to 10 to 12 hours depending on what you do, so the battery life is really good. There are of course some downsides. This is the AMD version which does not support USB-C charging. From what I've read, the Intel version supports USB-C charging. The Intel version also comes with Intel Quick Sync Video which is a feature that lets you export videos, in this case up to 30 or 40% faster compared to the AMD version and some of the apps that can take advantage of Intel Quick Sync are Adobe Premiere Pro, Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve. The third downside that I care about is there are three USB Type-A ports on this laptop, however two of the ports only support USB 2 speeds. It seems like here in Singapore, only the AMD version of this laptop is available and the official retail price is 2,598 Singapore dollars. And with that, you get 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of SSD storage, Ryzen 7 5800H8 core processor, and the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti GPU. These are the items included in the box. There is a 120 watt charger, some stickers, quick start guide and warranty info. This is the connector for the charger. 10 beautiful stickers are included in this brown envelope. So these are for decorating your laptop. The laptop comes with two years of warranty here in Singapore and this is the advertisement for the extended warranty. I think it's great that ASUS has included a laptop bag and the design of this bag looks good. This material looks like it can repel water. So there is one big pocket in front here for putting, I guess, the charger. The bag can be carried with this handle or you can use this bag as a backpack as well with these two straps here. At the top here there is a zip and inside there are two big laptop compartments and two smaller pockets and this bag is very well padded to provide protection for the laptop. So this is the laptop. There is no design on the top except for this Says here ASUS VivoBook, hashtag be explorer, hashtag ready, set, go, uncage your possibilities. I like the matte textured surface on the top, however this is quite susceptible to fingerprints. The exterior is made of aluminum and the overall build quality is extremely solid. The weight of this laptop is 1.95 kg. So there are some fingerprint smudges here and we have huge rubber feet to lift the laptop off the table. These are the downward facing speakers. The audio quality is loud and clear. We have some grills here for air intake. For the ports, we have a 3.5mm audio jack, micro SD card slot, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C, HDMI version 1.4, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A and this is for charging. On the other side, we have two USB Type-A ports with unfortunately USB 2 speeds and that's the battery light indicator. Let's look at the display and the keyboard. So the fingerprint sensor is built into the power button and it works really quick and effectively. At the top of the display is a 720p camera with a privacy shield. This is a 16-inch OLED display with resolution slightly higher than 4K UHD. The resolution is 3840 by 2400, so the aspect ratio is 16 by 10, which is better for productivity compared to displays with 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It just so happens that I have a laptop here with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display, so let me show you the differences between these two. This, by the way, is the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED UX582. If you take a look at the photo of the laptop that I have here, you can see the whole laptop, including the bottom of the laptop. Whereas on the ZenBook Pro Duo, the photo is actually cropped off. I am not able to see the bottom corner here. 
This is the latest palette on the ZenBook Pro Duo and I can see five layers here including this scroll bar on the right side. And this is the latest palette on the VivoBook Pro. So I can see five layers with space to maybe fit one and a half more layers. So with more pixels, you can see more content. In this case, the photo is not cropped off and you can see more content on the palettes. Now do note that I have hidden the taskbar. So with the taskbar at the bottom, maybe the photo will be cropped off slightly. With the taskbar at the bottom here, the photo is going to be cropped off even more. Having said that, this laptop here is actually better for productivity simply because there are two displays. The total number of pixels here is about 50% more compared to what you can find on this single display. But this laptop is about 1.5 to 2 times more expensive. Pixel density is 283 ppi. So pixelation is not noticeable. And this display has fantastic color accuracy. I measured 100% color support for sRGB, Adobe RGB and P3 and 98% for NTSC. I measured a maximum brightness of 300 nits out of the advertised 550 nits. 300 nits is sufficient for use in a bright room environment. If your environment has less light, you don't have to max out the brightness. So the colors on this OLED display are really vibrant. In fact, if you are switching from LCD to OLED, it's going to take some time for you to adjust to the extra vibrance and the extra contrast ratio. In this case here, it's 1 to 1 million. At 300 nits maximum brightness, HDR effect is still noticeable. So this video is a 4K HDR video I found on YouTube. And I can see the lights here, they feel like they are glowing. And the extra contrast ratio really helps to make the lights appear brighter when you contrast it against a darker background, relatively speaking, compared to LCD displays. This display has fantastic viewing angles. You can view the display from extreme angles with minimal color shift. The downsides, it's quite reflective. But as long as you don't have any reflections on the display or you don't have any light source pointing directly at the display, this is the image quality you can expect. The other downside, this is an OLED display, so there is the risk of OLED burn in. However, ASUS has included some software to run a screensaver and some feature to shift the pixels when the system detects that you are not using the display. All right, let's look at the bottom. Wow, there are many stickers here. One, two, three, four. This also looks like a sticker that you can peel off. I mean, when I'm using the touchpad, I can feel my fingernails scratching the surface. So ASUS has included some design elements on the keyboard to appeal to creatives. There's the bright orange escape button and above the function buttons, there are some design elements as well. The enter button has some styling. The number pad on the right side feels slightly squashed. So for the zero button, it's usually across two buttons, but here it's just one single button. So if you want to hit this area for zero, it's going to press this dot instead. I have another laptop with exactly the same keyboard layout. It just takes some time to get used to it. The keys have good travel, tactile feedback, and the overall tapping experience is fantastic. The touchpad is big, it's quite accurate, and it has nice clicking feedback, so the overall user experience is quite good. There is this ASUS dial pad feature, which is built into the touchpad. To use it, you just have to swipe down from the corner. I like to use my pinky finger to swipe down so that my index finger can use the dial pad instantly. As you turn on the dial pad, there is lighting which will light up, but the light is not that bright, so it's not that useful. There is a button in the middle of the dial pad. Once you press it, the digital dial pad will appear on the screen towards the top left corner. And you can tap once to go into the settings and use the dial pad to adjust the settings. All these shortcuts will update accordingly depending on the app that is open. So right now I don't have any apps open, so these are the three shortcuts uh, for my Windows uh, OS. So I've just opened up Photoshop and you can see the shortcuts, they have been updated. The dial pad works quite effectively. 
So currently I have a blank canvas and I have this brush which is being selected. So I can use the dial pad to increase the brush size. The dial pad is more useful for adjusting settings where the values can change incrementally. For example, if you want to adjust the brush size instead of pressing the buttons repeatedly, you can just use the dial pad to turn and it would increase the brush size um, quite quickly. Here's another example. This is Adobe Premiere. So I can use the dial pad to scroll the timeline or to zoom in and out of the timeline. So you can move through the timeline very slowly or you can step forward 30 frames at a time. The shortcuts can be customized using the Pro Art Creator Hub software. So there are already pre-programmed shortcuts for these four Adobe apps, Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Premiere Pro, and Illustrator. If you want to create your own shortcut sets for other software, you can just add that software here. For example, I want to create some shortcuts for Affinity Photo. And now I can just click here to add my shortcut. I can create keyboard shortcuts for the dial pad. Let's say I want to create a shortcut to change the brush size. I can click here to create a custom function. And let me just rename this. And let's enter our keyboard shortcut. Done. You can create up to eight shortcuts. You can also create groups of shortcuts. So you can create up to eight groups of shortcuts. That's a lot of shortcuts. However, to go into all those shortcuts, you will have to press several times to go in. What I don't like about the dial pad is you cannot change the location of the dial pad, which always appears at the top left corner. And as you can see, the dial pad doesn't really stand out against the background. Currently, there's no way to customize the look of the dial pad. So is the dial pad actually useful in real life? I think it really depends on your workflow. So for example, with Adobe Lightroom, I can use the sliders here to adjust the exposure or the contrast or the different settings. Or I can use the ASUS dial pad to adjust the exposure and the different settings. So this is an additional way for you to work and it can be useful if you find it useful. Let's talk about performance. So this review unit that I have here is equipped with 16 gigs of RAM, AMD Ryzen 7 5800H processor, which is an eight core processor. It has one terabyte of SSD with read and write speeds up to 1,700 megabytes per second. So the responsiveness of this laptop is fantastic when it comes to loading apps, uh, boot up, switching between apps, uh, adjusting uh, values while we are editing photos. Um, all that is very responsive. So the power that's packed into this laptop is definitely more than sufficient for graphic design work. It's very satisfying to work on this beautiful color accurate 16 inch display. And I really like the sharpness. When it comes to editing videos, you can edit 4K videos smoothly. However, the video export time on the AMD processor is actually slower compared to the Intel processor. So to export a 10 minute 4K video with H.265, it took me 7 minutes and 36 seconds. With other laptops that I've tested with Intel processors, I was able to get 4 to 5 minutes. So this AMD processor took substantially longer to export videos compared to Intel because Intel has this feature called Intel Quick Sync Video, which really speeds up video exporting. Anyway, to take 7 or 8 minutes to export a 10 minute 4K video to me is quite reasonable. It's just that the Intel processors are going to be faster. When it comes to gaming, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 is good for some light gaming. With Hades, I was able to get 60 frames per second with 1080p plus resolution. With Red Dead Redemption 2, I was only able to get 30 to 35 frames per second with 1080p resolution. 
and 40 to 45 frames per second with 720p. So this graphics card is good for light gaming but not for AAA titles. The laptop can handle heavy load and multitasking quite well. The only times when I can hear the fans would be when I'm exporting photos, exporting videos, gaming and when Adobe Cloud is updating apps in the background and during live streaming. But the fan noise is not that loud and ASUS has also included software for you to tweak the fan noise. Fan noise is loudest when gaming but it's actually not too bad compared to other laptops I've tested. Battery life for this laptop is quite impressive. When I streamed YouTube videos at maximum brightness, I was able to get slightly more than 12 hours of battery life and there isn't much difference between having the display at maximum brightness or at 50% brightness. And I was able to get four and a half hours of gaming on this laptop. You know how on Windows the battery icon doesn't have percentage? Well, on this laptop, I don't have the tendency to click on the icon to see the actual percentage because when I see that tiny little bar left, um, it actually means I still have a few hours of battery life left. All right, to conclude, this laptop, in my opinion, is suitable for creatives, for visual content creators. The performance is smooth, lag-free when it comes to using creative software. The two main selling points for me would be the display and the battery life. So this display is 16-inch OLED with fantastic color accuracy, 4K plus resolution, and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So I really enjoy using this display. And the battery life of 10 to 12 hours, that is quite impressive. There are of course some downsides, the USB 2 speeds for this two USB A ports, the lack of USB-C charging with the AMD version of this laptop and the lack of Intel Quick Sync video feature. So is this laptop worth the money? You can decide based on the findings that I have presented. Before I go, I just want to let you know that I have reviewed other ASUS laptops as well and if you want to check out those reviews, just visit the links that I have for you in the video description below. Thanks for watching, I hope this review is helpful. See you guys again. Bye!